Now we will also take a moment to introduce a group of special volunteers, and that is our board of directors, standing committee chairs, and the committee members who were able to attend tonight. We will start with Pat Hessen and her committee for the activities committee. Thank Pat. And then Tom Engel, Architectural Review Committee, and his committee. Can everybody hear me? I'd just like to introduce the group of people that came tonight. Uh, Phil Annabel, if you stand. Mario, everybody knows Mario, oh, yeah. <laughs> and Ken Dunn. And then Joe, Joe Corthia for the Voting Association and his committee members, please stand. Thank you. I'd just like to introduce uh, uh, Matt Heavey, a training officer. Joe Young, uh, Vice Madden, Nancy, Mariana is first uh, adjutant, David Turner, uh, second adjutant, and Mike Davis is the top man. So, <laughs> Don Noble was not able to be here tonight for the facilities committee, and standing in for him is Phil Form. And with those committee members for facilities, please stand. Ray Boone, would you and your finance committee please stand? Ben Serrano, Ben Sellers, Aaron Mansman, and John Myers. Thank you. Gary Carlquist, would you and your golf committee please stand? Thank you. 
That's another sweet jar. <laughs> I don't have a spot. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, we are fortunate to have a truly remarkable staff that have supported us and made these many accomplishments possible. Everyone has worked together with one overall objective to main, high, maintain Highland Lakes as Florida's best valued adult retirement community. We welcome your comments, suggestions, and recommendations, and we would like your own, if you would like your own hard copy of this presentation, you can pick it up as you leave the uh, auditorium tonight. So first of all, we'll do operations. I did that already. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. We've had upgrades to our Wi-Fi and phone systems. We've improved, improved security of our website. And next, return to regular evening staff, uh, resident staff coverage. And here are the lovely employees, Janet and Susie, who are covering our evening shift now. We hired uh, TLC Landscape to maintain our common areas and landscaping. We decided to have staff support the regular cleaning of the pontoon boats, and this is represented, represented by our employee, Cody. We've enhanced online work orders. Moving on to communications. We returned to a new and approved Highlander, continued the less uh, formal, interactive, and open board meetings, which we would encourage more of you to come to if you want to. Uh, we've improved the web, blast announcements, and other communication. Scarlett and Carrie added many improvements to the new homeowners. Go ahead. Thank you. Homeowners organize, uh, our orientation sessions with PowerPoint presentations and website instructions. That's Scarlett in the background there. I think she tried to hide herself. Uh, we've improved the look and function of the current HOL, HOA website and began the process to investigate possible upgrades or changes to that website uh, capacity and function moving forward this next year. We've reinstated the digital signage in the starter building. Moving on to facilities and decorative improvements. We repaired and painted the uh, clubhouse pool deck. We installed a new grill area on the upper clubhouse pool deck. We installed new wayfinding signs. You know, wayfinding, that's a, we find our way into Highland Lakes with decorative landscaping. You know, when I was in business and they'd say wayfinding signs, I'd say, what? <laughs> but they, that's what they're called, wayfinding signs. And we replaced clubhouse irrigation pump. We replaced poker tables. And I think they, in particular, look kind of elegant. Mm -hmm. We remodeled the woman's bathroom in the auditorium. Added our logo sign at the back of the golf building. <laughs> replaced old and outdated furnishings in the auditorium hallway, which I personally think is just lovely, since Barbara and I went and helped pick them out. <laughs> we remodeled the Blue Course number one bathroom. Uh, we're currently involved with the, with the uh, renovation of the lodge on January the 11th, this was started. We started the demolition. And as you might expect of a 65-year-old building, we ran into many electrical and upgrade and upgrade issues. But we have been seeing uh, sheetrock and ceilings installed, and it's all coming together. You can go to the next one. Thank you. And that's just a couple pictures. And internally, you can see the sheetrock and some of the ceiling work has uh, already gotten done over there. And then we repair, um, we installed a Florida-friendly poolside landscape makeover and was we were ple pleased to hear many positive comments from our snowbirds as they were returning this year and saying, oh, the place looks lovely, uh, how nice. 
And then we repaired and applied new asphalt on the park path for Red Force and completed improvements on the blue and white forces as well. We added window shades to the bagpiper room. And then we completed the patio uh, outside the bagpiper room. Furniture should be arriving for that uh, within the next two weeks. Um, and then we also replaced table and chairs in the bagpiper room. These, these were really looking ragged. The chairs were breaking and the uh, tables were looking rusty. And we placed uh, tables and chairs in the ladies' card room as well. This was, a, this was good because the ladies were complaining, a lot of people were complaining of how heavy the chairs were that we had in there. And these are lightweight and easy, much easier to move around. And then we replaced door access and security control panels. Thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. we'll It is the ongoing mission of this board to maintain high standards for quality lifestyle at Highland Lakes without compromising its tradition of affordability. And at the end of the day, we must not lose sight that living here should be about having fun and enjoying our many amenities and glorious lifestyle. This board pledges to keep on listening and continue working to build productive relationships at all levels of the association. We encourage and welcome your participation in this endeavor. We will now move on to the report from the treasurer. summarized in the five-page supplement to the meetings in January. Each of you... area. That will be the next thing on our agenda. Maybe give you a microphone system that can, you can all, that can accommodate all of us. Can you hear me now? Thank you. We'll start again. The 2016 financial report. You hear this one? That's better. This one better? This one is having less static, so we'll, we'll go with this one. Are you still having fun? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Barely. 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 We'll try again. Is this rosy eyes? Yeah, yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah, but that's because rosy eyes can be heard anywhere. Yeah! yeah. That's right. <laughs> Is this better? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. How about this one? <laughs> Fine. Let's try it again. The 2016 financial report is summarized in the five-page supplement to the meeting agenda. Copies are available to all of you. We also will be posting them up here. It is part of the 2015 audit statement that can be found in the board's annual report. It will soon be available on the HOA website, and a hard copy will be obtained, may be obtained from resident services. The first page of the report, and Kerry, you can pop that up. First page of the report is a statement from the independent auditor, and it gives our association what they refer to as a clean opinion, which is the highest rating given by a CPA firm. And what this means is that they have carefully examined all the accounts and records and found them to be in accordance with general accepted principles. 
The rest of the document includes the balance sheet, statement of revenues and expenses. This is the balance sheet, statement of revenue expenses and expenses. And all of these are in hard copy for you. And the final one is the statement of cash flows in, from the year ending December 31st, 2015. Any questions that you might have regarding any of these documents, we direct you to our association manager, Kim Weissman. So that's a kind of salvation for this community. Well, Highland Lakes is a community offering a wide array of features and amenities for the enjoyment of residents and the guests. It is also a business, and we can proudly announce that its financial condition is rock solid. No longer the best kept secret in Florida, Highland Lakes is and will continue to be arguably the most affordable, quality, retirement, lifestyle community in the state with thousands of other options for active adults. This could not be accomplished without the dedication of our remarkable staff and the support of our amazing core volunteers. Now tonight we have applauded them twice, and I'm going to suggest to you we do it one more time, but this time let's applaud, applaud our staff and ourselves for the standing ovation we deserve. Before I do, we would like to thank our outgoing directors, Lyle Stickelberg and Tony LaCoglia. We will now have our incoming directors take the oath of office. For this occasion, we are pleased that Tom Hurt will administer the oath. We'd like to ask our incoming board members to come forward. And Tom, if you would, join them at the podium and administer the oath.
about a hundred and seventy one thousand six hundred dollars balance mind you all the assets that you have were here at the time in 1990 it was five hundred and sixty one thousand dollars in 1995, it was $469,000. In 2000, it was $256,700. In 2002, it was $770,000. In 2005, it was $1,309,000. In 2010, one million eight hundred twenty three thousand dollars in 2014 two million thirty one and at the end of 2015 two million two hundred twenty two thousand dollars i think that's very solid the professional staff that the association hires and the volunteers that participate in this uh, very complicated world. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And at this time, we will open the floor for our homeowners to comment. The board will take your comments under advisement and for review. As you approach the microphone, I remind you to please be recognized by the chair before proceeding to speak. Please begin your comments with your name and address for the record. Speak into the mic so that the others may hear you. And also so that your comments will be picked up and recorded properly. Please keep your comments brief. Maybe have the first speaker. I'm Bob Kesha, 3522 Berkeley um, Lane, and uh, I just want to follow up with something that Angelos mentioned. Um, what Angelos is quoting are our liquid assets. Our liquid assets are cash and cash equivalents. In addition, there's nothing on this balance sheet for this room, our golf course, our pools, any other buildings, all our acreage, which I don't know what, what is it, 400 something? 684. 684. So we are very, very strong. We have no debt and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a liquid uh, fund to uh, fund our operations going forward. I just want to mention that because we keep looking at a balance sheet which only has liquid assets on it, where the assets, the golf course, the pools, everything. Is ours. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, Dennis Mealy, and I reside at 1197 Woodfield Court, and I was just recently elected to the Golf U3 board. I've been speaking on behalf of the 25 villa owners in Golf U, and good to hear the report about the assets we have because we have some needs in our community and as you hear me explain this this may also resonate with where you live we're actually grateful to the board for addressing the issue of retention pond remediation we are especially appreciative of the work that has been done by a Highland Lakes resident Anna Marshon I think we'll hear from her later also and also Don Mariana Don Mariani who's a seated member of the board of directors with working with the Pinellas County Adopt a Pond program. And by doing so, they're actually remediating some of the problems we're having with water quality in these ponds. Now, what we're also finding out is that the Adopt a Pond program also works at, at the request of the homeowners to be used to help not only do things to improve the water quality, but improve drainage and flood protection. In our 25 villas, we have six units right now that are experiencing extreme problems with water flooding from retention into their property. 
in one instance, it's actually coming into their, their condo, and they've had to work themselves to alleviate that problem as best they can, but the flooding is coming from the golf course because of the way the contour is of the seventh green, excuse me, the seventh fairway on the white course for this one particular condo. And there are five brick villas that are on a retention pond that it's unbelievable how much water is invading that property. It's coming right up to the, the back of the properties. They've also suffered an enormous amounts of erosion. There are envi environmental scientists that work for Adopt a Pond in the Pinellas County Division that are available to us. And Anna Marchand will also talk about how she's utilized them to plant uh, plants in these particular uh, retention ponds. We're asking for assistance from the board to help us. We'll be happy to do whatever we can to offer our assistance to solve this problem, not only for ourselves, but for others who may be experiencing retention pond problems, not only with water quality, you see the skeleton where the blooms on there, that's really a problem, but it's also the doggone flooding that's taking place. So we're asking for the help of the board to help us solve this problem. And it will be that much more valuable to, of course, the villas, 24% of our 25 villas are having a problem, as well as the community for the present and future residents. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, thank the board for this time. Thank you for here, and I think you've done a wonderful job real proud to be a resident here but I, when I moved in I would move from a condo you know to a house and my goodness what happened in the front yard or something and I know a lot of you have the same problem we have utility boxes throughout this community that are disgraceful they are unsightly they have black I, and I tried to scrub one by mine and ended up in the hosp uh, hospital with a pulled muscle from it but um, I think that if one person would talk to the utility company it wouldn't do very much good but if we spoke as a collective group some of the utility boxes are tipped over and I'm not even sure they function and many of them are, are, are just very unsightly mine out in front of our house is, is peeling and has three, three different colors of paint on it and uh, it's just unsightly and I think that it would make our whole community more valuable and more pleasant if we could get the utility not the HOA but the utility companies that are responsible to take care of those things to do something now uh, the other option is and I know two or three people here who've done that they just go out and spray paint their own box I have actually purchased a can but I'm a hesitant to do that <laughs> So if all of you would like to endorse that or say something, or I've, I've sent in one suggestion already to the HOA, and I'm, I, I will do it again, whatever I need to do, but I think one little voice is enough, and I need your help, but I bet you, you got the same problem I have. We do, we, we do, do. It's a ticket. My name is Anna Marchand and I'm uh, 3428 Sterling Road. Um, we're all part of the uh, adopt a Pond program, which is uh, greatly successful. Uh, now there are three in this community, and uh, mine is the oldest, ours being the oldest one, so we're moving into our second spring. Um, it's actually fabulous. The partnership with the county has been really, really great. Um, what really is happening now is because there are no chemicals in the pond, we're getting a lot of the algae and a lot of the torpedo grass growing in there. So my question is, to keep everything beautiful, um, we'd like to ask the board on what the plans are for maintenance. We had great, great help from the uh, Carl's team last year, and now we're getting into a, a need where you know someone needs to be there on a weekly basis. Some of the uh, members are going up there, the, uh, the Highland Lakes folks. So it's odd to see somebody that's 88 out there with a, a rake. And I know that's a concern to you folks as well. But people look at this every day and, and they, they get anxious. So the second part of my question uh, is, uh, of course, the, the maintenance of it. And the second part is, is there an opportunity to allow uh, residents to volunteer to help with, you know, the, further planting or even some of the maintenance in the pond, taking things out of the pond and, and whatnot. Because we would love to do that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, Stan Rosenthal, 2846A Highlands Boulevard. Just to take a moment and welcome our new residents. It's great to have so many new people, and certainly we have a fair coming up soon that uh, Woods Highland Lakes will celebrate their 40th anniversary. But most importantly, to, there's always some inequities existing in a community our size, but just a shout out of appreciation to our board. Thank you. I'm Beverly Senna, 1326 Woodstock Drive. And because I have the perfect opportunity to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'd like to make a suggestion tonight. There's so many times when being where you are positioned as compared to on the stage is so, such an improvement for whatever that activity is for the, for the uh, auditorium. Wouldn't it be nice if we had another strip of lights right up there that came down on you or came down on the Florida Orchestra or something, whatever is done there? What an improvement that would be. That's just an example. Put it in the pot someplace, would you guys? <laughs> Thank you. Linda Van Volkenberg, 3211 Air Drive. Um, I want to second what Nancy said, those unsightly boxes from the utilities that are on many, uh, in front of many houses. If you have uh, a house, you've got one in front of yours. If you're in a villa and, uh, um, you know, a, a duplex or condo, you may not have it. But they are unsightly. I'm wondering if we should get up a, a petition for that and have homeowners sign it and send it to the various utility companies so that maybe they'll do something about it. Maybe uh, the board can help us out with that. The other thing I'm concerned about is that uh, in our community there's no hazmat collection. There are a lot of things that end up in landfills because people don't know what to do with them or where to throw them. Some people know that they're not good for the environment and they need to get rid of them. I've been holding on to some of my fluorescent lights two years and, and lithium batteries and old paint cans and I keep looking to see when Pinellas County sends out one of those inserts with the bill and something is always happening on one of the days that uh, they have a uh, collection or for some of our people here, the collection may be too far away for them to get to. And I thought maybe it could be done here. Now I spoke to Carrie, she said they used to do hazmat collections here up until about two years ago, twice a year. But they thought that there was too much volume, which is a little ridiculous because people end up throwing it away and it hurts all of us. So I went to the website and I found out some information that might be useful to all of us. There happens to be a hazmat collection this Saturday between 9 and 2 p.m. at Countryside High School. So if you went down McMullen Booth to 580, took a right turn, right on the corner there is Countryside High School and there'll be signs for you to go in. And the kinds of things you can bring, fluorescent light bulbs, CFL bulbs, rechargeable or lithium batteries, because you can't throw them in the garbage, insecticides, fertilizers, old cans of paint that you're not going to use anymore, old TVs, old cell phones, certain electronics. So all of those things could be brought there and be taken and they know what to do with it, we don't except to give it to them. And if you have some other thing, you're not sure whether to bring it or not, you can check the site, www.pinellascounty.com, and it will tell you other sites, but there's one a month. <coughs> this is the closest one, you know, in the next couple of months, I thought it might be useful. Um, if you do this, when you hand your hazmat materials in, you might talk to the people there and tell them we need them to come and have a collection at Highland Lakes. At least once a year and not over the summer when the snowbirds are away. 
Okay? Thank you very much. Maybe the board can help out with this too. Thank you. Oh, we got one more coming up here. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bill Norris, uh, 3517 Oak Lake Drive in Palm Harbor, as they call it. And I just wanted to thank the board and the community for the best 26 years of my life that I have had. Thank you. life here. I don't know where anybody else can find it any better. I've got so many memories from this place that I will always cherish. Care. I remember when she reported. She had to look over the counter. She was so small. <laughs> and I hate to tell you how many times the advice that Angel gave me pulled me out of a couple of hot spots in my life. So I didn't have to go far, but I consider every one of you in this room and the people before you and the clubs and everything that I've enjoyed, I am so happy. And my wife and I often say, we must have died, we're in heaven. <laughs> So it looks like it's time to say thank you for coming this evening. And I would like to uh, make a last note. The board of directors will have an organizational meeting immediately after this. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. Good night.